Welcome back to Draw My Life. Today, we are doing Walt Disney's Pocahontas. We hope you enjoy the video. Click the like button. Subscribe to our channel. The Pocahontas portrayed in the movie looks different than the real Pocahontas. This story and its plot twists change to fit the fun of the movie. Tell us your thoughts in the comments. And who you'd like to see in our next video. Okay. Here we go. Pocahontas is a 1995 American animated musical historical romantic drama film loosely based on the life of the Native American woman Pocahontas. It portrays a fictionalized account of her historical encounter with Englishman John Smith and the Jamestown settlers that arrived from the Virginia Company. The film was produced by Walt Disney Feature Animation and released by Walt Disney Pictures on June 16, 1995. It is the 33rd Disney animated feature film and the 6th film produced and released during the period known as the Disney Renaissance. The film was directed by Mike Gabriel and Eric Goldberg, in Goldberg's feature directorial debut. The voice cast stars Irene Bedard and Mel Gibson as Pocahontas and Smith, respectively, with David Ogden Steers, Russell Means, Christian Bale, Billy Connolly and Linda Hunt providing other voices. The score was written by Alan Menken, who also wrote the film's songs along with Stephen Schwartz. After making his directorial debut with The Rescuers Down Under, 1990, Gabriel conceived the film during a Thanksgiving weekend. The project went into development concurrently with The Lion King, 1994, and attracted most of Disney's top animators. Meanwhile, Disney Studio Chairman Jeffrey Katzenberg decided the film should be a serious romantic epic in the vein of Beauty and the Beast, 1991, in hope that, like Beauty, it would also be nominated for the Academy Award for Best Picture. Screenwriters Carl Binder, Susanna Grant, and Philip Lazidnik took creative liberties with history in an attempt to make the film palatable to audiences. Pocahontas received mixed reactions from reviewers, who praised its animation, musical score, themes, voice performances, and songs but criticized its story with its lack of focus on its tone. The film's historical inaccuracies and racial overtones received polarized responses. Despite the mixed reviews, Pocahontas was a commercial success earning $346 million at the box office. The film received two Academy Awards for Best Musical or Comedy Score for Mencken and Best Original Song for Colors of the Wind. According to critics, Pocahontas has influenced subsequent films. In 1607, the Susan Constant sails from London to the New World, carrying English settlers from the Virginia Company. Along the way, the Susan Constant is caught in a North Atlantic storm and Captain John Smith, who dreams about adventure, saves young inexperienced crewmate Thomas from drowning. As they approach the New World, the settlers, including John, talk of adventure, finding gold, fighting Injuns and potentially settling in the new land. In the Powhatan tribe in Sinacomica, North America, Pocahontas, the beautiful daughter of Chief Powhatan, fears being possibly wed to Kokum, a brave warrior whom she sees as too serious for her own free-spirited personality. Powhatan gives Pocahontas her mother's necklace as a present. Pocahontas, along with her friends, the raccoon Miko and Hummingbird Flit, visit Grandmother Willow, a spiritual talking willow tree and speaks of a dream involving a spinning arrow and her confusion regarding what her path in life should be. The voyage's greedy leader Governor Ratcliffe, who seeks gold as part of his plan to bring him wealth and status, has Jamestown built in a wooded clearing and immediately has the crewmen dig for gold. John departs to explore the wilderness and encounters Pocahontas. They quickly bond, fascinated by each other's worlds, and end up falling in love, despite Powhatan's orders to stay away from the Englishmen after Kokum and the other warriors engage them in a fight. Meanwhile, Nico meets Percy, Radcliffe's pet pug, and becomes the bane of his existence. When John tells Pocahontas that he and his men are here to find gold, she tells him that there is no gold. Pocahontas introduces John to Grandmother Willow and avoids two other crewmen, but Pocahontas's best friend Nakoma discovers her relationship with John and warns Kokum. Later, John and Pocahontas meet with Grandmother Willow and plan to bring peace between the colonists and the tribe. John and Pocahontas share a kiss, while Kokum and Thomas, sent by Ratcliffe to spy on John, witness from afar. Furious, Kokum, 
screaming a battle cry, attacks, and attempts to kill John, but Thomas intervenes with his musket and kills Kokum, who destroys Pocahontas's necklace in the process. John orders Thomas to leave before the tribesmen arrive, capture John, and retrieve Kokum's body. Enraged at Kokum's death, Powhatan declares war on the English, beginning with John's execution at sunrise. Thomas reaches Jamestown safely at night and warns the English settlers of John's capture. Ratcliffe then rallies his men to battle, using this as an excuse to annihilate the tribe and find their non-existent gold. That same night, Powhatan also orders his men to prepare for battle. A desperate Pocahontas visits Grandmother Willow, where Miko hands her John's compass. Pocahontas realizes John's compass was the spinning arrow from her real-life encounter, which leads to her destiny. Morning comes, and Powhatan and his tribe drag John to a cliff overlooking a clearing for execution. Meanwhile, Ratcliffe leads the armed colonists to the cliff to fight Powhatan's warriors. Just as Powhatan is about to execute John, Pocahontas intervenes and finally convinces him to end the fighting between the two groups and spare John's life. Everyone accepts gratefully, and John is released, when the unmoved Ratcliffe orders his men to attack, they refuse to. Enraged, Ratcliffe fires a musket at Powhatan, but John shields him and is hit instead. The settlers, livid at Ratcliffe, turn on him and arrest him for hurting their comrade. John is nursed back to health by the tribe but must return to England for further treatment to survive. Ratcliffe is also sent back to England to face punishment for his crimes against the settlement. John asks Pocahontas to come with him, but she chooses to stay with her tribe to help keep the peace. Miko and Percy, now friends, give Pocahontas her mother's necklace completely fixed. John leaves without Pocahontas, but with Powhatan's blessing to return anytime he likes. The film ends with Pocahontas standing atop a cliff, watching the ship carrying John depart. Renowned for his animation of Ariel in The Little Mermaid, 1989, supervising animator Glenn Keane was immediately tapped to draw the titular Indian princess. Following the demands of Jeffrey Katzenberg to make the title character the most idealized and finest woman ever made, Keane first sought his inspirations for his depictions of Pocahontas from Shirley Little Dove Custolo McGowan and Debbie White Dove, women he had met during the research trip to Virginia. Keane recalled meeting the women, so I turned around and there's this beautiful Indian woman walking up, a Native American. She said are you Glenn Keane? The animator that's going to do Pocahontas. I said well, yeah. And then from behind another tree another woman came up and she said, well, my name is Shirley Little Dove, and this is my sister Debbie White Dove, and we are descended from Pocahontas. And as they stood there, I mean I took a picture of both of them, and between their faces was Pocahontas' face in my mind, I could see her. Timed with Pocahontas' 400th birthday, Pocahontas had a limited release in North America on June 16, 1995 playing in only six selected theaters. The film grossed $2.7 million during its first weekend, standing at the eighth place in the box office ranking. It beat the record set by The Lion King the previous year for the highest grossing opening weekend on fewer than 50 screens, a record that has not been beaten. The wide release followed on June 23, 1995, in 2,596 screens. Studio Estimates initially anticipated Pocahontas earning $30.5 million, ranking first and beating out the previous box office champion Batman Forever, 1995. The figure was later revised to $28.8 million with Pocahontas falling second behind Batman Forever. The final estimates placed Pocahontas narrowly ranking first grossing $29.5 million in its first weekend with Batman Forever falling into second place taking $29.2 million. By January 1996, the film grossed $141.5 million in the United States, being the fourth highest grossing film in North America of 1995, behind Apollo 13, Toy Story, and Batman Forever. Overseas, the film was projected to gross $225 million, though foreign box office grosses eventually amounted to $204.5 million. Cumulatively, Pocahontas grossed $346.1 million worldwide. Although at the time it was seen as a commercial box office disappointment in comparison to The Lion King, in January 1996. 
Tell us your thoughts in the comments.